All this is Dr. Mobin Sayyid from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So please uh, forgive me for some nasal congestion I have for a couple of days. I think I'm under the weather. So I'll discuss that separately. I do not know if it is COVID or not. So let's start our discussion. Today's discussion is really, really important. And that is the, sorry, my monitor is showing up here. So the discussion is about the study. It's a preprint. It is sponsored by CDC. It is done in California, so my state, uh, with Kaiser Permanente and Berkeley. So I have a lot of trust in Berkeley and some trust in Kaiser as well. Kaiser is good. Uh, so CDC, yes, no. The data is very, very interesting. And I had promised folks who had asked questions about unvaccinated folks and their risk. So this study has many parts in it. I have taken out the parts about unvaccinated uh, persons and how Omicron is working with them. And you would see that there is actually a lot of good news here. So some folks were saying that, why do I keep saying that this virus is milder? You would actually see here in this CDC sponsored study that they say that, that the virus is mild. So let's see how mild. And then I'll do a separate study with the overall, separate topic with the overall study. So let's start. So this is the drbean.com. This is the study hot off the press. So if you see here, January 11, 2022, clinical outcomes among patients infected with Omicron, SARS-CoV-2 variant in Southern California. An interesting thing is this, that in California, we have Delta and Omicron both. Because of that, you could actually find patient in the same community setting who are infected by Delta and by Omicron. So a lot of their uh, demographic parameters and variables are very similar. So you, we cannot say that, hey, the, the case of Omicron is milder because the community is better protected. And when Delta was there, community was not better protected. This is the same time. So it is a very, very important study. So let's uh, look at the parts that I have separated from this study, and I would refer you to the PDF as well. I would really request you to read it. This is that PDF. I hope you can uh, see it. My OBS does not allow me very good view of what I'm showing. But if you, if you can see here, this is the PDF. And the tables at the end are really important. So I'm going to go over some of those tables. So let's start. So this is the highest level of cases at this time are in USA. So that is Omicron causing its effect. Although cases have become, it seems, decoupled from death, which is a good thing. Still, please don't take a risk with Omicron. Don't go out saying that, hey, I'm just going to go get Omicron. This is, I'm hearing this a lot. Omicron can still kill. It is really reduced in its intensity, but it still can kill. And there is no, no telling who would it kill. Do I get to Micron today and die? I don't know. So please be careful. Uh, so let's start. So starting with my first, uh, this painting I did over the weekend, the painting's name is Honoring the Evening. And um, I'm pretty happy with this painting. All right, so Omicron time. And Omicron, and here is the big P, and the Omicron is tasing them. And they're saying, don't tase me, bro. Now let's start. This is the study. Study is from California. It's a preprint. Uh, Med RXIV, January 11th, University of California, Berkeley, Kaiser Permanente, and Center for Disease Control method. What did they do? So what they did was they analyzed data from November till January 1st. November 30th to January 1st. So almost all of the December plus one day on each side. And they used the S gene target failure to identify Omicron and not failure to identify Delta. Good. So same setting, same place, just two, two type of variants. 
what did they find? Again, this part, I've taken out the data for unvaccinated. So clinical outcomes among patients. So this is the summary here. The summary is they had about 70,000 total patients that they analyzed. About 70,000, a little less than them, about 800 less. There were 52,000. So please keep this number in mind. 52,967, almost 53,000 Omicron patients. And about 17,000 Delta patients. Good. So keep, please keep this in mind because as you would see the data, you would have to remind yourself that how many were the Delta and how many, how many were the Omicron. So 53,000 Omicron and 17,000 Delta. Here is what they saw overall picture. Hospital admissions of Delta one, one point three, were 1.3 percent. So Delta was 16,000 or 17,000. 1.6 percent, 1.3 percent got hospitalized. Omicron 0.5 percent became hospitalized. And those who would listen to this and say, why does Mubin say it is mild? Please read this study in which they continue to repeat that this is a milder variant. They say that because it is more infectious, it is more transmissible, it would create a pile of cases that can overwhelm the healthcare system and can cause risk of fatalities. So don't do that. But in its own right, it is milder. Rate of ICU admissions. So these are the patients who came in in the outpatient, got tested there. Some of them were symptomatic. Some of them were not symptomatic. Then some of them got admitted to hospital. Some went to ICU and some died. So this is the whole uh, chain over here. So rate of ICU admission is taken as a reference for Delta. And compared to Delta, the ICU admission of Omicron patients was 0.26. So about if there were four people who got admitted for Delta, then there was one person who got admitted for Omicron. That is how much the difference was for ICU. So you can see that already hospitalization was 0.5% versus 1.3%. So almost more than, uh, more than two times less. And then once in the hospital, then Omicron was, was even about four times lesser for progression towards the ICU. Then rate of mortality, Delta 14 deaths. The 17,000 cases, 14 deaths. Omicron, 53,000 cases, one death. This is an important point. 0 0.09 times the rate of death is 0 0.09, 0 0.09. So almost one-tenth of a percent, right? And that is the Omicron compared to Delta. And then median hospital stay. If you take Delta as a reference, that let's say Delta person is in hospital for eight days or nine days, Omicron is 3.2 days shorter. Omicron's average time is 2.8, not average, the range is from 2.8 to 4.1. Median or the middle most commonly a clean value was 3.2 days. It is 70% lesser than Delta. This is, this is a very important slide. Just this much is sufficient to give us the picture of what it is that we are now facing. Out of all the cases, 70,000. Look at hospital admissions and the rate of admission in both. Omicron is almost one third. 
then once hospitalized the rate of going progressing to icu omicron is one fourth then death 0.09 percent compared to delta and hospital stay shorter as well okay i'm gonna continue uh, again my promise was to talk about unvaccinated folks and their exposure so i have pulled that data conclusion i want to show you first they concluded during a period with mixed delta and omicron variant circulation sars-cov-2 infections with presumed omicron variant infection were associated with substantially reduced risk of severe clinical endpoints and shorter duration of hospital stay this is coming from the study cdc sponsored study why do i keep repeating it because i'm seeing people protesting that somehow I am saying that the virus is mild. This is from the study now. Another thing that is very interesting, they said in the study, among patients with Omicron variant, seven received intensive care. So remember how many were Omicron? About 53,000. Out of them, seven in the ICU including five whose infections were first identified in outpatient setting. One died and none received ventilation. Nobody progressed to ventilation. Compared to Delta, 17,000, 23 ICU admissions compared to seven from 53,000, 14 died. 11 ventilated. Okay, continuing. Now, how did the unvaccinated do in this? Reduction, this is from the paper. Reduction in disease severity associated with Omicron variant infections were evident among both vaccinated and unvaccinated patients and among those with or without previous infections. Meaning they're saying all across the board, everyone was less damaged, less hit by Omicron compared to Delta. Then, now I'm going to go over the table. So let me show what I did so uh, you can understand what kind of uh, data smithing I did. What I did was I went to their tables. So here are various tables. And if you see in majority of the table, they'll give you the table definition at the top. For example, this is table S8, demographic and clinical characteristics of all cases with SGTF infection. SGTF in infection is the Omicron. S gene target failure, Omicron. And non-SGTF is Delta. Regardless of testing. So some tables, some data. However, in most of the cases, tables, they have at the end this vaccination status and data related to that. So what I did was I took the tables top and I took the vaccination status and put them together so we can see the vaccination related data within that table's context. This is what I did. So let's see. I, was, I had been doing homework for you. <laughs> All right, so let's see this one. So table number two, demographic and clinical characteristics of cases tested in outpatient. So patient came in, in the outpatient, they got tested and some of them were Delta and some of them were Omicron. Now, what is their demographic and clinical characteristics? So they have a lot of data in there, but here, look at this. According to vaccination status, unvaccinated, number of cases percent, number of cases percent, non-SGTF column, this column, I hope you can see my mouse cursor, this is Delta. And the second is presumed Omicron. Good. Look at the percentage. Unvaccinated with Delta, 8,419 out of 17,000. 
So about 50% were the cases. With Omicron, 26%. So cut in half. Of course, if you see doses, and you would find something very interesting with the vaccine doses. Hear me out. So I was talking about uh, unvaccinated. Let's look at the vaccinated as well. Vaccinated, adenovirus, one dose, that is Johnson & Johnson. If you see here, Delta with Johnson & Johnson, 3.4%. Omicron with Johnson & Johnson, 3.4%. Similar result. Johnson & Johnson or adenovirus with a booster. Delta, 0.5%. So now 2 0.5% versus 1%. Now you can compare this to unvaccinated and see the difference between these two groups. But also compare between Delta and Omicron. So two doses, 0.5% with Delta and 1% with Omicron. Omicron actually is more infectious or is causing more infections in double vaccinated compared to Delta. Which means the vaccine's efficacy has reduced for Omicron. So this table actually shows that too. So across the board, there is a reduction. It's not just the vaccines are effective because here you can see that the vaccine efficacy has actually reduced. But it is also the virus itself that is helping. And why is it helping? I have that little slide at the end. Then if you see here, one dose of messenger RNA vaccines, Pfizer, BioNTech, or Moderna. So if you see that 2.9% with Delta and 2.8% with Omicron. So similar. Two doses, 38% with Delta and vaccine efficacy dropped to 52.9% with Omicron, meaning more people got infected. Three doses. 4.6% with Delta protection or, or got, got infected and 13.4% Omicron. And of course, folks who are going for the three doses, uh, most of them are, they were mandatory doses for healthcare workers. They could be folks who were already at risk and they wanted to have a third dose as well. So it's not necessary that they are one-to-one -one comparable thing in general for one, two or three dose. But within one dose group, it is interesting to see that Delta is actually causing 4.6% infection versus Omicron 13.4. That tells you the reduction in vaccine efficacy. Still protective. So in this chart here, what you can see is that the Omicron has become almost the cases with Omicron for unvaccinated have cut down to half Continuing, unvaccinated and vaccine efficacy. So once again, this is table S3. And if you see here, the unvaccinated, I, I'm sure it is um, small to see it, but still I'm going to read it out some of this. Imagine they took unvaccinated as a reference. Unvaccinated are people who are not protected in some way. They have a separate data for previously infected folks. So this is just, let's call them immune naive to SARS-CoV-2. Let's take them as a reference. Now, those who are vaccinated, if you see there are protections and 0.24% of the unvaccinated. So for example, if I read just one line and you can then read the rest. Adenovirus, one dose. If I see all cases, if we take number of infections in unvaccinated as a reference, then compare to them, those with one dose of Johnson & Johnson had 76% less infection or less cases. So this is how to read this. Generally, what this means is that vaccinated are more protected, but vaccine efficacy, if you see here, between Delta and Omicron, as I showed in the last slide, vaccine efficacy is reduced. So this is the second part. Third, hospitalizations. 
and they looked at hospitalizations for vaccinated unvaccinated in two ways one is cases tested in outpatient meaning pa patients who came in and they tested them and saw them to be positive versus just all cases which may have been you know just symptomatic and they did not yet test them so i'm going to show you the data for both again unvaccinated is the focus here look at this vaccination status this is association of let's read this sgtf as omicron omicron infection status with symptomatic hospitalization in various patient subgroup and this table has uh, lots of subgroups i just took out the vaccination one what they're saying is if somebody is infected with omicron what are their chances with a, with symptomatic state to end up in a hospital so if you see here no sgtf is delta sgtf is omicron and this this column is cumulative events over observed follow up time total per thousand so it's not a percentage it is total per thousand so here is the interesting one delta in unvaccinated caused 16.3 hospitalizations per thousand so out of 1000 unvaccinated folks who got who were symptomatic got hospitalized what is the rate rate out of those thousand 16.3 will be hospitalized or let me say it this way if there are a thousand symptomatic unvaccinated people who visited the outpatient out of them 16.3 will be in the hospital will be admitted if the same number of unvaccinated people infected with omicron visited the hospital guess how many will be hospitalized 2.2 per thousand 16.3 per thousand to 2.2 almost almost about eight times reduction right then th so this was cumulative the next one is symptomatic so cumulative is all symptomatic or not they came in they had symptoms or they didn't have symptoms their chances of being of infected with omicron and ending up in the hospital if they were symptomatic then delta 0 0.98 per thousand Omicron 0 0.41 per thousand, once again half. So if the symptoms are there, then the chances of hospitalization are half. If the symptoms are not there, then the chances of hospitalization for all those who are who don't have symptoms yet and are tested in the hospital, out of them compared to Delta, about eight times less number of unvaccinated folks will end up in the hospital so that is this data this is all cases hospitalization so this is table s4 association of sgtf omicron infection status with symptomatic hospitalization in various patient groups and again i took unvaccinated if you see here, once again, same thing, cumulative cases and symptomatic cases. And now you can see the trend here, 17 unvaccinated, 17.8 per thousand versus with Omicron, 3.1 per thousand in the hospital. So once again, about six times difference. And if you see here on the symptomatic hospitalization rate per thousand person, 1.07 with Delta and 0 0.57 with Omicron, about half. So if you, if somebody has developed symptoms, that means disease has progressed a little bit, then the rate of hospitalization is half in unvaccinated. But if the disease has not progressed yet, people just appeared positive because they tested them, then the rate of hospitalization with Omicron versus Delta is about six times less, or as you saw in the previous one, eight times less. Of course, in the same one, there are 
vaccinated folks as well. So please, <laughs> vaccinated folks, don't be upset. I wanted to make sure that I could put this risk in front of the unvaccinated because this is a question that was asked again and again. Again, I'm not sitting here taking a side to say stay unvaccinated or, or stay vaccinated. Do whatever you decide best for you and your loved ones around you to protect yourself. But here is the data. I'm just going to read vaccination for a second. So let's say two dose vaccination. If there are people, for example, Pfizer or Moderna, have two doses, like I have two doses of Moderna, then 7%, not percent, 7 per thousand is the hospitalization. Versus with Omicron, 3.4 per thousand is similar, actually lesser drop compared to unvaccinated. In unvaccinated, the drop goes from 17 per thousand to 3 per thousand. Uh, I rounded off downwards. Compared to two doses, where it went from 7 to 3.4, it went to half. So again, I would request you to look at these tables, but it is interesting data here. Unvaccinated and previously infected. So let's look at that. This is table S10. Combined history of documented SARS-CoV-2 infection. So proven, documented and COVID-19 vaccination among cases with SGTF infection and non as Omicron and Delta. So let's look at it. For example, if you go to the top here, unvaccinated, and if you see the second column, that is no documented previous infection. And in that case, 49.6% with Delta. So if there are 8,394, sorry, 17,000, out of them, 8,394 were Delta and 13,579 were Omicron in unvaccinated. So Omicron percentage was lesser than Delta. Now, if they were previously infected and that was documented, that was provable, look at the drop, 0.1%, even in unvaccinated, 0.1% or 0.5%. 0.1 with Delta, 0.5 with Omicron. So Omicron, again, previous infection also has a re reduced efficacy. Previous infection and then reinfection with Delta is 0.1. 0.1%. So we're not talking per thousand percentages now. But previous infection with some other variant and this infection with Omicron, 0.5%. So even previous infections capability or protection is reduced. Lucky for us that Omicron itself is milder. So you could actually see all the rest as well. If you don't mind, I'm going to look at Moderna and Pfizer two doses. So if you see here, two doses. 13 or 0 0.1 with previous infection. And if just two doses and no previous infection, 38%. Do you see the difference? 38% versus 0 0.1%. And then if you see here uh, with Omicron, 52% versus 0.3%. So efficacy is reduced. So anyways, interesting data. So now the question is reasons. Remember when South Africa said Omicron is milder? The answer became from some very, very uh, popular big deal doctors, leaders, that we cannot take South Africa's example because they are, they declared them 90% or more immune. Before this, Nobody wanted to understand that the natural immunity has a place. But as soon as it served the purpose of making a case to keep people afraid, they said, well, South Africa is 90% immune because they are 60% uh, immune by previous infection and 30% or 24%, 26% by vaccine. So they declared that it is not the virus that is 
less severe. It is the composition and the variables in a society that are more protective because of the infections, because of the vaccines, because of the masks, because of the all those factors. Of course, all of those factors play in. But in this study here, there is an answer. That answer is, at this time in California, these both variants are coexisting. So you cannot say that for Delta, the situation is different and for Omicron, it is different. And it is the same healthcare service as well, Kaiser. So they have to be similar. And then you still see that Omicron is doing better. And so what can be the reasons? Hand washing, mask, everything, we are more alert. You are taking more care of things. That is good. So that is a factor. Vaccines are a factor. Previous infection is a factor, although you're seeing that the efficacy is reducing. And there's no denying that. You can see this data. This is a CDC-sponsored study. But Omicron itself is also less dangerous because a couple of studies that I have discussed in the past, Hong Kong University study, who said more upper track or bronchial tree infection 70 times more than the lower respiratory tract. That means Omicron has less tendency to become, inf uh, to infect the lower respiratory tract or lung tissue. And it is becoming more and more upper respiratory tract infection system. That means it is good. It is becoming like other human coronaviruses that live in the upper parts of our respiratory system and like the colder environment and replicate in colder times. And that's about it. So one, it is developing, Omicron is developing that tendency. It is still killing people. We saw that. One person died out of these 53,000. So it is still killing them. But redu reduction is because of its behavior. Second behavior, the Gupta lab from Yale, where they said that we are not seeing that successful syncytia formation. And I talked about that as well a few days ago. So it is not causing severe disruption of the cells, causing immune system to become really mad and attack. It's not doing it. It's not doing it. And that also reduces the severity. There may be more that we will find out. So severity is reduced not because of the community and the scare factors and the vaccines and the previous infections and the behaviors, but also because of the virus mutations too. So that is the discussion. I am going to come back later and I'm going to read overall summary once more as a separate, not for just unvaccinated, but for all. And then I'm going to do another talk after that, comparing Omicron incidence and the death rate to flu incidence and death rate to see how close have we come to become that way or are we still far off. So I'll do some extrapolation from the study. Now you are up to speed with this one. The links are in the description. If you wanted to go and read, I would actually suggest I cannot pull all kind of data and put it here. That would be like redoing the whole study here. I cannot do it. So I'm summarizing that some interesting points. So with this, uh, let's stop for now. And I'm going to come back in a few for the rest. So in the meantime, if you would like to support this work, the easiest way to support is just like the video. That would allow the algorithm to spread it and I'll be supported. Some people would watch ads and I'll get money. And if you would like to support it more than that, then you can use a Patreon. You can be a patron or you can use PayPal link. These links are in the description or you can buy me a co coffee. Thank you very much. I'll see you in a minute.